Principles of Sports Nutrition. Although fat burners are incredibly popular, they are seldom used correctly or for the right reasons. A pill can't compensate for a deficiency of physical activity or a poor or excessive diet. Until these variables are assessed, modified and corrected, any approach otherwise will prove to be futile. Body composition represents the outcome of one's lifestyle and living habits which ultimately reflect the individual's state of mind. It also reflects genetic predisposition and individual biochemistry. To change body composition, we must change the behavior, training and eating patterns associated with the accumulation of body fat and incorporate those procedures associated with the development of lean mass. Those who benefit the most from any decent thermogenic product are those who are currently involved in sport and exercise as a way of life. They've got the diet down and they're 100% committed to training. They know how many grams of protein they need to eat every day and understand the effect of consuming high glycemic carbs and bad fats. Their body is much more responsive to the effects of a thermogenic supplement when it is conditioned and functional and when a baseline of health and fitness has been achieved by consistent adherence to the principles that create health and wellness. They also understand the limitations and risks associated with so-called magic bullets or fat burners. And that's exactly what fat burners are. They are magic bullets and there's no such thing. So if you go in to a health food store looking for a magic bullet, you're never going to find one. Of course, they're going to sell you something. They need to sell the products on the shelf to pay their rent. However, a great advisor, an intellectually advanced, knowledgeable advisor, a certified sports nutrition advisor, for example, will lead you away from that kind of thinking and then coordinate a strategy and a program based on science that will truly help you achieve your ultimate goal which is what? To lose weight? No. They're not going to focus on the weight. They're going to focus on other elements of your composition such as lean mass. They're going to talk about how you live and how you think and what you're doing and what you're not doing. That's really the only way that works. Anything less than that is going to fail. Period. 100% guaranteed failure. If you're on a diet, you're going to fail. If you take a fat burner, you're going to fail. The only exception, as I've mentioned here, is if you already have the fundamentals covered and consciously most of those people that have the fundamentals covered have no interest in taking a fat burner because things that they're already doing and are striving to achieve and become better at are by far more effective for reducing body fat than taking something like colas for scoli or ephedrine or citrus orientarium, otherwise known as Seville Orange. So for the fitness buffs out there looking for the extra edge, for athletes who need to reduce body fat percentage for competitive reasons, or for bodybuilders slash fitness competitors who need added support to achieve their goals, fat burners are designed to augment beta oxidation, which is fat burning, Futile cycling and lipolysis, which is defined by the mobilization and conversion of triglycerides into free fatty acids. By raising body temperature, otherwise known as thermogenesis, through the stimulation of noradrenaline, the body burns more calories from fat because the level of activation is low. This is known as aerobic metabolism when the activation potential is low. Noradrenaline is a weak anabolic adrenal hormone. It increases strength and stamina, stimulates muscle growth, and also defends against muscle loss while dieting. So in the same way that steroids can be taken by an athlete to improve tolerance to stress and facilitate or hasten or quicken the addition or accretion of muscle and enhance the loss of body fat, that's what a lot of so-called naturalists are doing with these fat burners. They can be abused. They are often abused, but it takes an abusive mind to abuse them. 
So they're not sustainable long term. They have a potential damage that's much greater than damage, say, by taking iron or vitamin E. The risk is in the dependence on them and the avoidance of doing those things which are absolutely critical and essential for long term functional body composition shifting from a state where you've got excess body fat or where you're in a state where you've got a healthy amount of body fat but you want to take it down to a competitive level for a short term. These products have short term value, there's no doubt about it and that's how I would recommend them but only as a final end as opposed to an initial beginning. Anyone who abuses any thermogenic concoction to reduce body fat without understanding the significance of lifestyle, exercise, and nutrition is simply flirting with disaster. I don't use ephedrine with caffeine to enhance my strength in the gym anymore because it is now a banned substance and I compete as a natural athlete. When I did use it, I found it slightly anabolic in the off season when training for strength and power. The only time I ever used it as a thermogenic agent to enhance beta oxidation was in the latter stages in preparation for a bodybuilding competition. Otherwise, I maintain a fat percentage of about 10% year round as an endomorph through the discipline and joy of optimum nutrition and frequent exercise. And that is my advice for anyone out there. Get focused on the basics, the fundamentals, the foundation, the science. That is what it's going to take to rearrange the molecules in your brain and in your body.